Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Neil. If you are new here, please do not forget to press subscribe. Today we're going to look at two things. We're going to take a look on the internet on the Charvel website at the new Charvel launched a couple of days ago. This is the Phil Scrosso SoCal. To me, this guitar is exactly what Charvel should be. And there's a lot of features on this guitar that I absolutely love. A lot of specs that I want to go over with you guys. The other thing that we're going to look at is my Moa G300 over here. I've dialed in a new preset. I've dialed in a lead, a rhythm, a clean and a lead with wah. And I want to see what you guys think of the presets because I really like them. So let's get on with it. Okay guys, so let's take a look at this new Phil Scrosso Signature Pro Mod SoCal Style 1 HFRE. It's getting a bit ibanezy with all the, the letters and they're hard to remember, but it's basically a Phil Scrosso Signature. It's a SoCal. It's kind of everything Charvel should be to me and reminds me of the Charvels when I was younger, you know, that have the uh, single humbucker in the bridge position. It looks like a Fishman Fluence that he's picked, a uh, Fishman Modern there in the bridge, which is a really good pickup, really modern. In my opinion, it's very similar to an EMG, but it's kind of like that EMG flavor that you get with an EMG. The Fishmans are kind of like more of that. So if you love the EMGs, you're, you're bound to like Fishmans too. The recommended retail price for this guitar is $1,500. But obviously that's recommended retail. That means that when you go to a store, when these finally get to the stores, you probably will find them a couple of hundred dollars cheaper than that, especially a year or so after launch. So this guitar is in silver burst. It looks absolutely fantastic. The only thing I've noticed straight away, which I'm surprised about, is that this thing doesn't have 24 frets. I think it would have been nice to give this guitar 24 frets. For me, the SoCal's, there's a couple of things what kind of don't make it my go to guitar to pick up. I probably lean towards Jackson Dinkies a bit more. And the reason for that is, I'll just go to the gallery and the pictures that I'm clicking on, they will come on your screen as I'm talking about them. If we go down the back of the guitar, this is where the magic is. And this is why this guitar to me is everything a Charvel should be because they've got rid of the heel um, at the bottom of the neck so you can reach up high and they've used like the Dinky style heel, the Dinky style neck joint and the body is obviously a socal shape it's not a dinky shape i would have probably preferred a dk body on this but i'm am i by saying i would have preferred a dk body am i really trying to mold this guitar into a dinky when that's not what it is and i've even scooped away you know they've scalloped out the lower horn at the back there to make it even easier to reach up and that is actually more scooped out more scalloped than you would find on any dinky that i've ever played it looks similar to my green glow made in korea dinky body the way that is scalloped out but even on these pitch I think that is a, a deeper it looks deeper you know than than the dinkies that I've played and yeah it looks nice it's kind of like a crossover between a Charvel Socal and um, a, a Jackson dinky but I like my dinky so that's fine the scratch plate on there pick guard whatever you want to call it depends on exactly uh, you know probably what country you're in it's got a nice satin finish on it it's not a plastic horrible strap type glossy um pit guard it's got a nice satin look to it and it looks really nice i think i'm not really a pit guard type of guy but if i do have pit guards on my guitars i would like them to be like that satin you know not a terrible plastic gloss looking i, do, I just think the plastic shiny looking uh, pit guards look cheap and nasty and that's not what they've opted for here they've gone for this satin look and it looks great the other thing i really like about this guitar is they've gone back to the old toothpaste logo i was never a massive fan of the charvel logo that's kind of molded into um, a charvel guitar shape you know that's not really i think when i was younger that logo mainly was appearing in my era on charvettes not charvels so yeah, I prefer the toothpaste logo. I'm glad he's gone back to that. It's really nice um, to see that logo again on guitars. I guess the one humbucker in the bridge may put some people off, but if you're a metal guitarist, how often do you use the neck? I used, I'm gonna use the neck later on in this video, but I only really use it when I'm chilling out, playing quite um, melodic licks on my own. I don't really use it. I have never really used it in a band situation, I don't think. The guitar's in a nice silver burst. It looks pretty awesome. I've also adopted the Charvel DK uh, input jack on the back at an angle. It's pointing upwards, which when you're sat at home recording, it's really handy to have that jack there and not at the base of the guitar because the jack can hit the seat in between your legs 
quite a lot and it's not good for your jack socket but also when you're playing live obviously if your jack's angled upwards you can thread your lead if you use one or your wireless i guess and uh, put it through your strap you know so it's heading towards your strap is the jack socket basically is what i'm trying to say and yeah that's the way it should be it shouldn't be pointing downwards there's nothing going there's nothing downwards you know all that's going to happen is you're going to stand on the lead and rag the cable out basically so yeah i think that's another good option it's gone for there's a nice subtle little signature on the back which is really nice i'm glad he's not plastered his name all over it or anything like that but yeah it looks really nice it's nice to see a mahogany body also on a charvel um you know it's a very popular wood in the world of metal and i know from the fender jim root models that i've played that the mahogany body does sound really cool and i think i prefer a mahogany body on a strap type body because when i played the jim root model uh, which is actually a fender obviously it, it's it was fantastic that guitar you know um, very heavy i like my guitar to be heavy and feel well made so yeah overall i really like it would i pay that amount of money for it i don't know because money's tight right now i'm probably gonna have to off offload some guitars actually soon because money's getting actually that tight but yeah let me know what you think of this new guitar i love it i think it's really nice i think it's fresh i think it's nice to have a metal charvel you know it's clearly a metal guitar and i think it's nice to see that and i would like to see more metal guitars like this like i said the only thing i would say about this guitar is i would prefer 24 frets on it although having said that i don't know why i prefer them because i hardly ever use a 24 fret but it's just nice to have them there if you do want to use it let me know down below what you think of this guitar in the comments i really like it now we're going to move on and i'm going to show you my presets in the Moore g300 i'm using the herbert amp model in there and i'm using an ir that is actually by ml sound lab it's called rugged it's a nice ir it goes with this amp really well i've dialed in three tones with the herbert and i really like them one is a lead one is a lead with wah and the other one is just a straightforward rhythm let me know if you like any of these tones that i've dialed into the Moore g300 let's check them out first of all we'll check out the rhythm tone and then we'll check out the lead tone and i'll turn on the looper and i will just basically jam along playing the first thing that comes into my head so expect raw boom notes basically let's go <laughs> Thank you. 